low practicing low flow anesthesia okay i am from mumbai many of you must be knowing me i have no conflict of interest to declare yes i come from city of mumbai and what are we going to discuss today is why low flow we'll discuss this in next 20 25 minutes advantages what is the it didn't gives you better quality of anesthesia reduces pollution it's also financially beneficial for the hospital we'll see the definition we'll see the classification and then we'll see the concept of time constant which is very very important to understand how to do the low flow anesthesia what kind of monitoring we need then we'll see the actual method how we are going to do it then a few controversies regarding sevoflurane and its usage in low flow anesthesia we'll see the disadvantages finally we'll conclude and then of course there's time for question and answer in a live session that will be on sunday so how do we go about it okay so when facts change change your mind don't try to change the facts right pre covid 19 what was the situation a doctor used to usually take this temperature of a patient or a child look what has happened now when somebody wants to enter the hospital this is a physician who is entering the hospital and who is taking his temperature a security guard is taking his uh, temperature have you ever thought that a security guard will be taking our temperature of a doctor but that's the reality so the who is going to be the illiterate of the 21st century is not the one who cannot read and write but those who cannot learn unlearn and relearn so what we are going to this was told to us by alvin toffler it's a very famous quote of his and what we are going to do is we are also going to do what we have learned we are going to unlearn and it's time to relearn in next 20 25 minutes we'll try to do this imagine this is a guy who's having a good time he's having a hookah and there's a narcotic substance over there it's humidifier and of course he's a rich uh, arab who's doing all this and if you imagine him to be a patient then this becomes the endotracheal tube this becomes the circuit and the whole hookah becomes the anesthesia machine so the earliest anesthesia machine was found by ralph waters in 1924 is a very very simple system 1924 he invented a new non rebreathing valve a co2 absorber and a reservoir bag this is ralph waters and he died in 1979 and then today's essentially any anesthesia machine whichever uh make you take it you will have an essentially this is what it's going to be and in uh, you know inspiratory limb expiratory limb pressure valves soda line canister and pop off valves basically this is the structure it may look like this which is very uh, what you say a high tech machine we nowadays so we don't call them any machines we call them anesthesia workstation and some of the features are extremely good this is a econometer of a uh, drug machine which gives you idea whether your flows are surplus if you are in yellow zone if you are efficient you will be in the green zone and if you are in deficit you will be in the red zone so let's see why low flow okay low flow because we want to save volatile anesthetics it increases the efficacy of the volatile anesthetic and reduces the cost whenever you are using high flow what essentially you are doing is you are wasting a lot of precious gases oxygen nitrous co or dust whatever you are using basically you are throwing it down the drain hard earned money is going down the drain you want to avoid it let's see how you can avoid it now asian consumption per hour for sevoflurane let's see is given by this formula 3.3 multiplied by fresh gas flow and the dial setting whatever you do. so let's imagine there's going to be a 5 hours case and one anesthetist is keeping the fresh gas flow at 3 liters and he has kept the dial on 3 so he's going to use almost 30 ml of sevoflurane per hour so 5 hours makes it 150 ml another anesthetist keeps it at 1 fresh gas flow and keeps the dial setting at 4 so he is going to use 13 ml per hour he will use 65 ml at the end of the case next anesthetist keeps further fresh gas flows low and his dial goes up so he uses about 8 ml per hour so 5 hours 40 ml and lastly a person like me who uses fresh gas flow as low as 0.2 that's about 200 ml my dial is on 6 
I'm using zero fluorine. I'll be using four ml per hour. So in five hours, I'll use only 20 ml of zero fluorine. One guy uses 150 ml. My I use 20 ml. Look at the difference. That is the cost saving which I was telling you about. So certain some old papers you will see about this. Uh, initially, of course, they were wondering whether this technique was um, uh, what do you say safe or no. And they found that minimal flow technique of safe 0.5 liters per minute leads to major improvement of heat. So it gives you moisturized air, warm air, and the condition of anesthesic gases in the anesthesia system is much better than the dry gases if you are going to supply them at high levels. Some other papers, old papers again, 2012 Canadian Journal of Anesthesia, and they concluded that at 0.3 or 0.5 liter per minute flows, you can safely use sevo fluorine as well as this fluorine without any problems. And it leads to good temperature homeostasis as well as it leads to good cost savings. Now we know this absorption chemistry. Soda lime creates the most important part of our uh, low flow technique. So we know carbon dioxide that is exhaled by the humans will be taken by water, which forms hydro uh, H2CO3, that is carbonic acid, which reacts with sodium hydroxide, thereby giving rise to sodium carbonate, heat, and water. So that humidification happens because of the water that is being produced over here. And the heat, of course, is because of the temperature is rising. This is an exothermic reaction which further reacts with carbon calcium uh, hydroxide, thereby giving rise to calcium carbonate and sodium hydroxide, which changes the color of the indicator to violet. We know this chemistry. And waste and pollution goes down considerably. The very simple fact that you're using less, giving less to the patient. And then that's why in the closed circuit, very less amount will come out, thereby causing extremely reduction in the wastage as well as the pollution will be extremely low. So just imagine somebody in 1979, Virtue demonstrated that when you reduce the flows from 2.5 liters to just 200 ml, he reduced the pollution at the head end by nine times. So significant reduction of pollution occurs Greenhouse effect, we all know what it is. All these gases which we use, nitrous oxide or desfluorine, sevofluorine, halothin, or whatever inhalation agent you are using, they are all greenhouse gases. What I mean by greenhouse gases, is what is a greenhouse? Now, we all know we get energy from sun. Some rays will always reach the earth through the atmosphere. Some will be bounced back from the atmosphere and the gases which we are using, they thereby cause rarification of the atmosphere, thereby allowing more sun rays to hit the earth, thereby giving rise to global warming. So if we use less of these drugs, especially nitrous oxide, sevofluorine, desfluorine, and halothin, of course, we are reducing the greenhouse effect, thereby causing reduction in the global warming. As simple as that in the simple words. Now, that's why if we use less of these gases, we will cause less of greenhouse. Our industry, that is the anesthesiologist, contribute only 1%. The major industries that cause this are the airline industry, the cars, the automobile industry, the bikes, the cars on the road, buses, all that. But unless we start doing our effort, the others will not. Of course, the refrigeration industry also has already acknowledged this CFC free fridges, ACs and everything is nowadays is CFC free and those are the greenhouse gases which they have barred now. So the next thing is we also should do it thereby giving rise to the reduction in the greenhouse effect. Look at this. The amount of years it takes, global warming potential, 100 years, of your halothane, isofluorine, and sevofluorine is humongous. So is of nitrous oxide. And look what CFC has done. 10,000 or 11,000 is the potential. So maximum is, of course, CFC. Then, of course, our gases are come. But we contribute only 1%. But I feel we should contribute our efforts to the greenhouse effect, thereby reducing the usage of all these dangerous gases. Now, what's the definition of low flow anesthesia? When do we call it a 
low flow anesthesia. So it's an inhalation technique in which a surgical system with absorbent is used with a fresh gas inflow less than patient's alveolar minute volume. So you remember, whatever your patient's alveolar minute volume, if you have kept your fresh gas flow lesser than that, that means you are following the technique of low flow anesthesia. So there's a classification, Becker and Silvinistus, which says C open is more than four liter, high flow is from two to four, medium is from one to two, low flow is 500 to 1000 ml per minute, minimal is 250 to 500, and metabolic flow, that's you giving only oxygen, whatever is required by that particular person, that's about 250 ml is the requirement of a 70 kilo adult human being. And that's what you supplement in a metabolic flow. So there is another classification by the amount of rebreathing that is taking place. So at the right hand side, you will see at six liters, there's hardly any rebreathing, say around five. At four liters, it becomes 15%. At two liters, it becomes around 35%. At one liter, it becomes 55%. And at 500 ml, it becomes 75%. So somebody else can also describe that a low flow anesthesia technique is that technique in which the rebreathing by the patient is more than fixed because less than one is your low flow anesthesia. So what is the amount of rebreathing that is occurring? It's around 50%. So any technique whereby the fresh gas flow is less than one liter and the rebreathing is less is more than 50%. 50 and more is considered as a low flow technique of anesthesia. Now we come to the concept of time constant and circle system work. The time constant now is a major for the time required for changes in the composition of the fresh gas to lead to corresponding changes in the composition of gas in the anesthesia system. So, Commonly, what I essentially I'm trying to say is whenever you make any changes on your anesthesia machine, how much is the time that is required to reflect the same change in the lungs of the patient and then finally into the brain of the patient? That is the time <clears throat> constant. So it is given by this formula T is equal to Vs divided by Vd minus Vu. So the concept is here is at the end of the first time constant, the concentration of the anesthetic agent or gas in the system will be around 66%. The second time constant gives it to, it takes it to 86.5%. And the third time constant makes it 95%. So it takes about three time constants for you to see the same changes in the patient's lung and brain when you have made those changes. So now let's see what happens. So in, in a normal patient, so at assumed volumes of five liters for the system, that is the machine uh, tubings and the, the entire circle system will have the volume of say five liters. And 2.5 liters for the lung is the FRC of a adult 70 kg patient. And an uptake of about 0.35 liter per minute we'll get time constant as like this. Say at, at eight liters, the time constant will be around say 58.8. So I say about one minute. At four liters, it becomes two minutes. Two liters, it becomes four and a half minutes. One liter, it becomes 11 and a half minute. And 0.5 liter, it becomes 50 minutes. So imagine if a patient is light and suddenly moves during the surgery and you keep, you are on low flow, imagine say 4.5 liters, it's going to take 50 minutes to whatever dial changes you have made in your CO or DES or whatever inhalation anesthetic agent you are using. It's going to take 50 minutes to reflect it into the lungs and brain. So patient will stop moving only after 50 minutes. I don't think any surgeon will be happy that your patient is going to keep moving for 50 minutes. As against that, if you increase the fresh gas flows to eight liters and change the dial, it will be reflected in 58 seconds. That's about a minute. I think that's acceptable. So what I'm trying to say is, remember this equation. Whenever the gas flows are high, 
the time constants are low and whenever the gas flows are low the time constant is high and that is why whenever you have to push the gases rapidly into the patient you don't have to just increase the dial but also have to increase the flow not changing the flow will not rapidly take the patient deep this is the principle on which the entire low flow anesthesia is based upon okay so this is what is happening when you just increase the control dial the fresh gas flow is entering into the bypass pathway as well as into the chamber picking up the vapor and getting out so if you increase the gas flow large amount of molecules will enter into the main chamber will pick up the vapor and go and thereby causing faster changes in the brain of the patient i hope i'm clear so what kind of monitoring is required okay whatever you have it you must use it without the monitoring i would say please don't practice low flow anesthesia inspiratory oxygen concentration expiratory oxygen concentration inspiratory co2 expiratory co2 airway pressures minute volume anesthetic agent concentration in the circuit these are mandatory to conduct a case on low flow anesthesia if you don't have it please do also i would say advanced anesthesia machines which do their own leak test are also very very mandatory if you are going to conduct this kind of cases because the dangers of low flow anesthesia which we will see later are hypoxia and awareness and you don't want that to happen and that is why you should not be doing it if you don't have proper monitoring and good anesthesia machines in your operation theater okay so how do we do it so you know your pre medication induction everything opioid muscle relaxant everything is same that doesn't change when you have intubated or you put the patient on a lma initial phase will always be high flow why because obviously the denitrogenation of the circuit has to take place also there is 20% oxygen 80% uh, nitrogen in patient's lung so the entire system the machine as well as the human lungs have to be denitrogenated so initial phase is with high flow so you you can roughly say about 10 minutes you will keep initial uh, with high flows so i would say high flow is around say for more than 4 liters so you will say 1.4 liters of oxygen 3 liters of nitrous if you are using nitrous otherwise you will use air for that use iso co or des whatever at these concentration allow the entire denitrogenation to take place and when i'll go to initiate the low flow is when the denitrogenation is complete anesthetic gas concentration is established which you will see on the display your mac is adequate your patient is adequately deep all other parameters are stable fresh gas flow is adequate reservoir boy bag is filled that is the time you will go on the low flow so you will reduce the flow this takes about 5 to 10 minutes at the flows at around 4 liters it takes about 10 minutes to keep higher flows it reduces the time so even in 5 6 minutes you will be on the low flow anesthesia so the moment you remove reduce the flows your dial has to go up so now whatever dial you had kept iso co des it has to be increased because otherwise it will not go adequate amount of dosages of drug will not go to the patient and then if you are conducting minimal flow anesthesia initial high flows will be for 15 20 minutes and flow reduction will be to these levels further reduct increase in your iso co des dial is mandatory. so whenever remember your flow goes down the dial of anesthetic agent has to go up to maintain the anesthesia and at the end of the case when you have withdrawn everything close the vaporizer 10 minutes before the end of the surgery because what a phenomenon known as coasting so it's coasting means when a ship comes very close to the port the captain switches off the machine of the boat and boat keeps on going by its own momentum similarly a patient 10 minutes prior if you shut down the vaporizer doesn't come out of anesthesia immediately why coasting is happening there is enough amount of inhalation anesthetic agent in his brain lung as well as the system you are still on low flows 
so it keeps on circulating in the machine in the brain in the lungs patient doesn't come out of anesthesia and when everything is over you to wash out the nitrous or air as whatever you have used you raise the oxygen flow switch off everything and then it gets wiped off from the system as well as the brain and the lung and that is the way patient comes out of anesthesia and then you reverse the patient so initially you have kept high flows in the middle portion you have kept the low flows in the end you have done the coasting and lastly now you have withdrawn everything and this is what is going to happen your patient is going to throw out all the inhalation anesthetic agent which you gave him during the case and he is going to come out of anesthesia how much is the cost reduction i mean a scientific discussion usually we don't talk of cost reduction or because human life is precious nevertheless most of the corporate hospitals and uh, surgeon owned hospitals there is always this issue of how much is the cost and how much cost reduction we can achieve to have more profitability this is a german study which of course is translated into english and it shows that look at the extreme right this is the low flow and this is the high flow i flow 2 hours cevo fluorin anesthesia in europe this is a german study this is uh, halothen uh, your uh, iso cevo and des iso 11.32 euros for a 2 hours case 45 is for cevo and 52 for des uh, iso des and cevo and look at the close system it is 3 9 and 15 so from 52 it became 15 from 45 it became 9 so almost 1 fifth from 11.3 became 3 again 1 fourth so 75 to 90% reduction in your costing occurs and this is just for a 2 hours case so imagine what can happen if you have a longer case a 4 or a 5 or a 6 hours case for the reductions so a lot of cost saving occurs and that is why it is a good technique somebody will say okay but since you are using such low flows your soda lamp is going to get exhausted very very fast so if you are talking about saving in the inhalation anesthetic agents what about the soda lamp soda lamp is going to get more exhausted more soda lamp will be needed yes there is also a study where they checked mean utilization time and uh, they found out that the soda lime exhaustion does go up at low flows and it goes up by about one half to one and a half euros per anesthesia hour so you convert that into indian currency it would be say 40 to 100 rupees per hour anesthesia hour your your uh, expenses increase so about 50 to 100 rupees per hour your billing will go up but the amount of saving which i have showed you 75 to 90% and of uh, iso cevo or des and those agents are extremely expensive so net net you will be far better off if you are if you are using low flow anesthesia this is only about costing what kind of uh, soda lines you should use you can use anything that is branded don't use non branded stuff because we don't know what kind of stuff that is made up of we use in our hospitals this particular brand it's called free but it is not free nobody gives anything free in this world it's called free because it is it is devoid of any residual products it doesn't react with your iso or cevo or for that matter des fluorin thereby giving rise to Uh, generation of compound A or say carbon monoxide, which are extremely dangerous gases, uh, which if at all are there in the circulation, will keep on circulating and will not come out because you are using an extremely closed system. Okay, so this is what you should be using. Now let's see what is this compound A controversy. Now we all know that this came from United States of America, and what happened is. uh compound a cevo fluorine when it reacts with certain amount of soda limes it gives rise to a breakdown product of cevo fluorine which is known as compound a now this was produced in the labs on the rat tubules under laboratory conditions now rat tubules are different than human kidney tubules the temperatures required to production of this compound a 
are very high. We normally, we don't see those kind of temperatures in the operation theater or in the system. But the US FDA put a stop of using sevoflurane below one liter of uh, fresh gas. That was the beginning of this controversy. Why? Because of course the rat tubules were getting injured and patients, the, the rats were having renal failure. So they thought that probably the same thing will happen in humans. And of course the real renal cystin uh, conjugate B lies pathway in the biotransformation of compound A was taking place. Okay. Now fortunately beta lies pathways 10 to 30 times less active in humans than in rats. That's the first thing. And like I said, these were lab conditions. They are not replicable in the OT. But US FDA recommendation was valid. And that is why one liter and below was not allowed. It was allowed only for one hour. And at least two liters per minute for exposures greater than one hour was allowed. Okay, that is the controversy. Now, when this was tested by certain European scientists, they found out that nothing like that is happening. And human volunteers were perfectly healthy. So they came out with contradictory uh, evidence. And they said that we have limitations on the clinical use of sevoflurane and problems have not been noted. So this was the study. They did it extensive hours. Volunteers were given long anesthesia at low flow with sevoflurane with say like 1.25 MAC and 8 hours. And they did not find any significant level of compound A production, and that is why they said that this was. So where do we start today? Okay, compound A was being formed due to its reaction with potassium hydroxide in the barrel. Now, what is barrel lime? Barrel lime contains potassium hydroxide. Barrel lime was available in the United States. It's a particular brand of soda lime. Thankfully, India never imported any barrel lime it was never landed in India ever in the history. So there cannot be any stock of lime, barrel lime anywhere in India. Okay, barrel lime later on also was withdrawn from the market since 2004. US FDA recommendation is from 1995. Okay, better CO2 absorbents have been invented after 1995, which do not react with CO fluorine. Hence, today we can safely say that at least in India, we can safely use CO fluorine in low flow circuits at whatever flows you want to keep, wherever you are comfortable, you can keep those. Okay. And uh, conclusion of this study, this was in 2006. They checked in patient model and different types of absorbent produce. Now, what kind of carbon, uh, your carbon monoxide, as well as your compound A was produced, nothing was produced at all. So they categorically said there is no relationship between temperature and your compound A production. So today we can safely say we can use low flow anesthesia even if we are using CO4. Are there any disadvantages of low flow anesthesia? Yes, they are designed for use with high fresh gas flow, all our uh, newer uh, vaporizers. So if you they are not used for low flow anesthesia, basically. They're not made. So if you are using low flow anesthesia, there are chances that inadequate amount of agent will reach the patient and patient may remain awake. Hypoxia is another problem. So there are certain disadvantages, of course, of low flow anesthesia. Also, another important thing is anything, any unwanted impurities, gases, if they enter into the breathing system, they will not be getting out of the system because they are continuously going to get rotated between the patient and the machine and nothing is open to atmosphere. That's why it will never, never, never leave the patient. And that is the pitfall, biggest pitfall. So any gas which is not taken up by the patient or absorbed chemically will tend to accumulate naturally so. These can be exhaled by the patient. They can be contaminants or they can be generated by chemical reaction used by your soda line, right? It's absolutely crystal clear. So which are these substances? A patient, alcoholic patient may 
exhale alcohol and it will never leave the system. He will keep on inhaling the same stuff. Acetone, say like uh, diabetic ketoacidosis, yes. Carbon monoxide poisoning, thankfully it is not seen in India much, but abroad, yes, in, especially in winter months when the air conditioning system of a car gets clogged, the carbon monoxide can come inside the and has knocked off many, many patients. Methane is another uh, gas which is produced by uh, intestine and that can enter into the system and will not leave. So LFA, that is the low flow anesthesia is contraindicated in certain patients like intoxicated, inebriated, alcoholics, diabetic ketoacidotic patient and somebody who's had a carbon monoxide intoxication. So we will not use low flow anesthesia in such patients. We will use high flow anesthesia. So to conclude, I would say it's a safe practice of low flow anesthesia and minimal flow anesthesia in most patients. I'm saying most patients because obviously we just now saw which patients we need to avoid. It leads to humidified and warm gases being delivered to the patient, thereby improving the quality of anesthesia. I showed you it is economical. I showed you it is ecological. It leads to less theater pollution. If the theaters don't have any scavenging systems, and at least in, well, I practice in Mumbai, some of the top hospitals also don't have any scavenging systems, barring one or two. So most of the hospitals who don't have scavenging systems, all of us are inhaling the gases which are exhaled by the patient. And that is why we should take care of our own. And it's better to use less, give less to the patient. And so it's, he will exhale less and you will inhale less, as simple as that. But it needs advanced anesthesia machines, monitoring. I told you what kind of monitoring is needed. FiO2, FiCO2, MAC, inspired CO2, everything needs to be. Atlaxis is known, shown to be clinically insignificant in various studies. Because you have to use higher amount of oxygen, there are chances that you will have atlaxis, but you can always do recruitment techniques after every half an hour or 45 minutes in a longer case and you will be through. So there'll be no problems with that. So like uh, in the words of J.A. Baum, he said, the main obstacle against the revival of low flow anesthesia remains what? The disinterest and the reluctance of anesthesiologists to change their usual practice. We all get settled to a particular technique. We are in the comfort zone. Nobody likes to give away the comfort zone. Everybody wants to be there in a comfort zone and that is the biggest obstacle tomorrow when i tell you to change some may change some may go and will go back to their own original techniques in fact there is another study which was done that after a lecture some people do change but most of them go back to their original techniques six months down the line so there is also this sort of study which they have done so why this occurs? Because nobody wants to change. That's the reluctance. And secondly, you are disinterested. You are comforted. Maybe we should break the misconceptions and the useless fears. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.